everyone, welcome to episode three of the AWS SheBuilds Tech Skills Show. Uh, my name is Maya Nishitani. I'm a solutions architect from Amazon Web Services. And uh, it is super hot here uh, in Australia. Uh, it is summer, the middle of summer in the Southern Hemisphere and uh, it's super humid. Uh, I'm usually used to the dry heat here. Uh, what about you over there um, in Sydney, May? Hi, my, um, yes, today, well, it's a wet day here in Sydney. Uh, and all the viewers, uh, those who I haven't met before, my name is May. I'm also a solutions architect, but I'm based in Sydney, Australia. Um, it has been um, wet three weeks or maybe even four weeks. It has, it's summer, but it's, it's weird, like December and then the summer here in Australia. But um, I'm loving it. <laughs> Awesome. And um, I'm curious as to where everyone is tuning in from. So I'd love to know uh, where you're dialing in from and put it in the chat there on the on the right hand side. So uh, just to know where you uh, where everyone's tuning in from and uh, we'll be using the chat for for giveaways today. Is that right, May? We are. So today we have some quizzes and um, and I you know, I want to make sure that the, the viewers are tuning in and we'll have some quizzes and AWS credit giveaway so you can go and build it, use the credits and, and learn it from those. Yeah, awesome. So uh, look out for that. Uh, so please pay attention and uh, there'll be questions. So awesome. So while everyone's tuning in and uh, writing in, uh, in their chat, um, I just want to talk about reInvent because uh, it happened last week in Las Vegas and uh, there's been some really awesome announcements, especially around AIML and other AWS services. And today, today's focus, today's episode is all around uh, AWS AIML services. Um, and so for those of you that are listening in wondering what reInvent uh, actually is, uh, it's our uh, learning annual learning conference, uh, which is hosted by Amazon Web Services for the global cloud computing community. Um, this uh, this event was actually in person in Las Vegas, but we had some uh, great keynote announcements. Uh, we had uh, info around training and certification and also 1,500 plus technical sessions. So you can uh, dive right in um, in any of your areas that you're really interested in. Uh, so if you're already in a technical role or just starting out and want to learn more, uh, I would suggest check out some of the on-demand content that's available on the AWS reInvent webpage, or you can go into the YouTube uh, channel and there's a couple of keynotes that are already available there. And um, if you're wondering about where to start, uh, I'll say start off with the keynotes. Uh, there will be some really, um, a broad range of topics addressed in the keynote there. So, um, and one of my favorite announcements from this year uh, around AIML services is the Amazon Lex chatbot designer, which allows anyone to automatically design chatbots uh, based on conversational transcripts. So you can create chatbots in hours rather than weeks because um, it helps you um, helps you with uh, creating uh, chatbots basically. Uh, that's what Amazon Lex does. Um, and not just chatbots, but it also integrates well with uh, Amazon Connect, which is our uh, a contact center service. Uh, so if you're thinking about creating an IVR uh, within your call center with Amazon Connect, uh, definitely have a look at Amazon Lex Chatbot Designer. Um, and obviously for chatbots within your web applications and also some um, even integrates with messaging channels like Facebook Messenger. So. Um, and if anyone's wondering, um, you know, what Lex does as well, um, it powers your Amazon app, uh, virtual assistant. I'm not going to say the name because it's going to trigger all the Echo devices around the world. Um, so, May, what's your favourite announcement from reInvent uh, this year, especially around AIML? Yeah. It's just um, there's so many announcements, um, and I'm trying. I'm still trying to catch up with <laughs> all these new announcements. Um, so one of my favorite announcements as part of AIML um, is the DevOps Guru for RDS Relational Database Service. So if you're 
if you're familiar with DevOps Guru and um, have used the database service before, you might probably wonder what is this about. So the DevOps Guru for RDS is a new announcement. It's powered by machine learning that really helped to make it easy to improve the applications, you know, the operational performance and um, detecting and diagnosing um, from the operational perspective. And um, because I, before AWS, I was the developer. So if something goes on with the database, it's really hard to debug or diagnose what's happening in the database. It could be uh, sometimes the queries that I wrote, it just like taking maybe like a minute to run the query, which slow down the other, um, the operational stuff uh, or, you know, the other applications can't access the database. And in, that, in this case, uh, a tool or a features like develop gurus can really help to to navigate and to find out what the root code is and the cool thing is it can notify the developers where you can subscribe to sns you know simple notification service or event bridge to get a notification so the the time to debug or diagnose can really reduce in a you know the production systems or um you know, to find out what's happening with their applications. So I think that's one of my favorites so far because I'm still catching up with all these announcements. So, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, definitely DevOps Guru, um, when it was available, um, it's, it's definitely something that uh, my customers have looked at. And I think by extending yeah. it to RDS, um, it definitely help a lot of customers in, um, in any space, especially enterprise as well. Awesome. Now, uh, we have our special guest, Flora Eggers, all the way from Germany, uh, speaking to us. She's a, uh, one of our colleagues uh, from AWS. She's a solutions architect uh, from all the way from Germany. And uh, she'll be talking about how to change your business with NLP, so natural language processing. And she'll walk through the architecture and also have a cool demo to bring it all together. Uh, and for those of you who are wondering what uh, natural language processing means. Uh, we'll let Flora explain that to you. So, uh, welcome, Flora. Hi, my name is Flora, and I'm a solutions architect at AWS. And in this she builds session, I will show you how NLP can uh, change your business. So today we will first look at three topics. One, how is NLP changing the business world? So what do we know about that already? Um, second, how can NLP impact your business? And third, um, how to adopt NLP applications successfully? And then I'll show you a simple architecture and a demo using the AWS pre-trained natural language processing services, which can be an easy starting point for you. But before we dive in, um, what is natural language processing? So we're now looking at the intersection between computer science and linguistics. And um, NLP is really how computers process, understand, manipulate, and generate large amounts of natural language data. This ranges from simply counting the words in the text to actually understanding the meaning behind a piece of text. So looking at now what we currently see in the business world, artificial intelligence and natural language processing um, act as new sources of competitive advantage. So we see that text data is growing explosively. This is structured, unstructured, voice-based, social, customer service, etc. And at the same time, um, companies are recognizing the need to differentiate with AI and the value that it brings. And actually, a survey by McKinsey found that um, for the front runners, so the respondents that um, can attribute 20% or more of the, their earnings before interest and taxes, EBIT, uh, to AI. Um, also report an improved performance and um, can develop a competitive advantage. So I've been talking to different customers in different industries um, and we've been increasingly seeing an interest in NLP-based solutions. 
Now, where in particular do we see the interest in NLP? So there's finance, healthcare and pharma, insurance, power and utilities, retail, legal, um, but the list really doesn't stop there. Um, so what do they all have in common? They have problems that have a high business impact, involve large amounts of data, and the tasks are complex. So if they were easy, you could really just let a uh, rule-based program do its work. But with unstructured text data, the human language um, is, uh, has complex meanings and uh, semantics. So basically, any company, no matter uh, the industry, uh, will find these sorts of problems where they can free up employees from repeating um, tasks that involve unstructured text data or also gain new value from um, previously untapped uh, sources of data. And across all of these companies, um, NLP offers a variety of use cases that can be helpful in different parts of the organization. So there are a few categories of use cases that I want to uh, give an overview with, but um, this is not even a complete list. So along a typical workflow um, of a use case, you start with some input data, perform some type of analysis, and then output your results. And that in input data can already come in the form of text, but um, it may come in the form of images or scanned documents. For example, if um, we have um, scanned legal documents that still require a signature on paper, and then we can use optical character recognition or OCR to transform that into machine readable text. Um, or if the input is available as speech, um, like in the case of contact centers, then we can use speech to text or automatic speech recognition to transform that into text. And then at the analysis stage, there are a variety of use cases, starting with named entity recognition. Um, this means extracting mentions of people, places, organizations, and um, other entities from a given text, or, or also sentiment analysis, so identifying positive, negative, or neutral um, sentiment in a text. This can really help with the customer experience um, if you handle customers well who might contact you with a negative sentiment, for example. Um, we have classification, which you can use for many different types of tasks. Search, so particularly semantic search, meaning that we can now understand the user intention behind a natural language input. And um, as an output, you can either um, use a logical workflow on these results, or you can also use text-to-speech, um, sometimes in combination with speech-to-text, sometimes use standalone, um, for example, for accessibility. And these use cases, um, they generate a measurable business impact. So here we see the example of TabCorp, one of Australia's top gaming and entertainment companies. And they are using an interactive voice response system um, that lets customers place um, sports and racing bets over the phone. And um, here, their first step is speech to text um, to transcribe what the customer is saying. Then they have a system in the background that automatically creates a betting slip by classifying several factors. And then they're using text-to-speech to, -speech to um, read back the transaction to the customer. And they were even able to customize the system to um, take into account regional slang for the different um, locations that um, TabCorp is operating at. And with the system, 
they were able to take 1 million bets in just the first six weeks after launch and they're not limited to a certain number of agents so they could take uh, 870 concurrent calls um, and with that um, build a strong customer relationship. So there are of course different challenges involved with the adoption of NLP or machine learning in general. We need the right scalable infrastructure, the right tools for the whole ML workflow, starting with just the time consuming data preparation at the beginning. And we also need the right people who will work with these tools. Um, and so to make this all easier and more approachable, we have different layers of ML services. And um, this can really meet you where you are. So imagine um, that like an SQL statement. Select name from table students. So there will be experts who know exactly what is happening in the background and uh, they want as much control as possible. And for them, uh, we have the layer of ML frameworks and infrastructure where the experts have the most freedom of choice. And then there are those people who um, know how to write the SQL query, but they don't really care what is happening underneath. They just want to use it. And um, for those people, um, we have the ML platform, so the layer with Amazon SageMaker, um, that really covers the whole ML workflow end to end. But then there are also those people who don't even want to write an SQL query, they just want to use that functionality maybe with a drag and drop interface. And um, this is where the AI services and solutions come in. So these are pre-trained and ready-made services that you can use to um, quickly get what you need, perhaps customize it. Um, you'll find speech to text, text to speech, again, optical character recognition, but also the core NLP analysis, um, like <clears throat> entity recognition, sentiment analysis, classification or semantic search. So let's have a look at an example of a successful adoption um, of an NLP use case with the combination of different services. So this is the example of Bartridge, that's a global fintech company, um, and they implemented a process to extract data from proxy voting forms. So the data points they were looking for were things like um, the names and board of directors, the length of their tenure, etc. So they first used two ready-made AWS AI services for this, Amazon TextTrack to extract the text from their documents and then Amazon Comprehend for the entity extraction. So for the names and tenure, etc. And with this part alone, they were, um, or they estimated that um, it, this allowed them a 40% reduction in manual efforts. And now they wanted to go even further um, with this data and customize it to their business context. So they turned to Amazon SageMaker, uh, this suite of ML tools, um, to predict potentially contentious shareholder meetings. All right, we're just going to pause right here and just talk about this uh, particular architecture. Yeah, um, my, have you used any of these AI ML service like with your customer or just, you know, just curiosity exploring yourself? Yeah, actually um, I did a demo around Amazon Textract, Comprehend and yeah. uh, Amazon Kendra as well. So, um, which is an wow. intelligent search service um, powered by machine learning um, with the solution called Document Understanding Solution. Um, and this is an actual solution which is completely serverless and using managed services. So, um, and it's basically a one-click deploy with CloudFormation templates. So if you have an AWS account that you can play around with, um, I suggest 
uh, you go to that solution, which will provide the links later um, in this session. But um, what it does is um, it actually does search and discovery. So it lets you search information across multiple scan documents, including PDF and image files, um, as well as compliance. So it lets you redact information from documents, um, workflow automation. So it plugs into your uh, existing upstream and downstream applications. So uh, some of the existing um, use cases for this would be um, you know, digitizing and storing customer feedback yep. forms. Um, if you're working in finance, you can convert invoices uh, and documents into CSV files. Hospitals, like if you're working in healthcare, you can use this solution to extract medical information um, such as conditions, uh, medications, and even protected health information. And speaking of sensitive information, if you're working in, in a legal department, you can use the redaction controls out of the box so you can redact sensitive data and references to people and uh, locations before sharing it with your external parties. So there's plenty of um, different um, outcomes that you can achieve from this. And yeah, yeah it's the possibilities that's, are really endless. What are your thoughts? That's really, that's really cool. Because um, the one you were talking and then during the Flora's presentations, I was chatting away. I was busy chatting away in the, in the chat. Um, so one of the, um, their viewers, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but uh, the Twitch handles new power. That's, that's what I, I'm guessing. New power. He's, he was mentioned. Um, the uh, the viewer was mentioning that um, he's planning to use the text track and the comprehend or maybe those ML services to to convert audio to text in the law class. So, like if you're if you're going to the law lecture or the in the lecture room, um, you know, um, that's what I'm <laughs> making assumption. So, like from the the lecture audio to text. And you don't have to take notes. That's a really cool idea, isn't it? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because <laughs> definitely um, good idea. It is like I have seen. I was just talking in the chat. Um, I have seen some of the use cases for the meeting notes. So you know, these days I multitask, talk, and take the meeting notes. So if I can convert my meeting notes from the audio to the um, to the the text like digitized form using text extract and um and then digitize that and then share that with or maybe do like comprehend or other animal services if i want to get fancy <laughs> and then share it with the external customers or people so that would be that would be pretty cool and i want to call out to i'm assuming that's a pokemon lover 900 that's the twitch handle thanks for tuning in and saying hi <laughs> Awesome. Welcome, everyone. All right. Um, so let's uh, uh, should we we have... continue on the should we continue yeah. on the forest presentation? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Awesome. So what I really want to stress to you is that you can uh, combine different solutions as it suits your use case. So perhaps you need speech to text in the beginning uh, instead of OCR, or um, you yeah need to add more. And you can do that with SageMaker to add a more customized um, machine learning and natural language processing um, models on top of what you already have. And now uh, let's look at an uh, example. Um, so here, this is an example of processing incoming emails from customers. And let's say I'm working for a great chef um, that has started to sell her own cookbooks and other kitchen related items. And the web shop has been really successful, um, but along, come, along with that comes uh, a lot of emails. Um, so some of those are complaints, some of those are just inquiries into certain things. So we want to um, um, yeah, make sure we're responding to them in the right way, make sure we're prioritizing them. Um, later, we could even route those according to uh, their purpose to different um, people in our staff. Um, but for now, I have built a small workflow that we can use to get some main information quickly from those emails. And here we are relying on Amazon Comprehend. Um, with its pre-trained models and out-of-the-box capabilities. 
In particular, I'm using it for sentiment analysis and entity recognition and key phrase ex extraction. And as you can see um, here in the diagram, this all starts with an email that is arriving into an Amazon S3 bucket, which then starts a Lambda function, uh, which uses Comprehend to analyze the text in that email, stores the results back to S3, and then we can use Glue and Athena to have a look into those results. So let's see what this looks like in the console. Okay, so I am now in the AWS console and already in my first S3 bucket, the input text bucket. So this was right at the beginning of the workflow here. I want to upload my emails um, into. So let me start by choosing a new email at file email four and upload this to the bucket. Now we see we have four emails in here. So as I said, um, the next step is that a Lambda function is triggered by this new object. And this is our analyze text Lambda function. So you can see here we have this S3 trigger and here we see our code. So this is written in Python and using um, the AWS SDK for Python, Photo 3, to call the other um, AWS services that are used here. So how we're starting out is we are just reading the, let me make this bigger, the text from the new object um, in S3. And then we are first calling the detect dominant language um, API from Comprehend. And um, yeah, this basically gives us back uh, the languages that are detected in the text. And in this case, it's really useful because we have an international customer base and we can use this information to um, correctly continue with the processing. So it's good to do this at the beginning. And next, we're using Comprehend to detect entities. So these uh, are some um, predefined entities like location uh, or organization. And there's a pre-trained model um, in the background that will detect these uh, entities from my text. We can also customize this uh, and extend it with custom entities according to the business use case, but in this case, I'm just sticking with the standard detect entities. And after that, I am um, detecting key phrases using Amazon Comprehend. So a key phrase is really a noun and the words describing it. Um, so you'll see some examples of that in our results, but for example, a lovely day. And then um, I am calling detect sentiment to yeah, detect the sentiment of this email um, that can be positive, negative, neutral or mixed. Um, and it will also give me the scores for each of, each of those options. So how likely is it that this is actually a positive email? There are a few other things that we can do with Comprehend. Um, I didn't um, take advantage of all the options. So for example, we can recognize certain types of events and um, their um, related details. But if you're interested in what else you can do, you can go and check out the Comprehend documentation or just try it out in the console. Yeah, and now um, I am combining those results and saving it as a text file into another S3 bucket. This is my results text bucket. So let's have a look in there. Okay, let me refresh this. Now we see we also have the 
email for analysis.txt. And now I could download this file and have a look at it, but I am going to use Glue and Athena to um, further look into um, my results. So to do this, I first um, created a Glue crawler to crawl over my results S3 bucket and extract the schema for the data that uh, lies in there. This then created a table for me, which I can have a look at in Athena. This was called the uh, results text bucket table. And if I preview my results here, then I can see that I have these four emails, sentiment, sentiment score, entities, and also way at the back, my key phrases. But you can already see it's um, there's still some nested objects in here. It's not very readable still. So I separated that into different tables um, to look at the key phrases, sentiment, etc. specifically. So let's start with the sentiment results and preview the table here. So we have our new email, email four, with a negative sentiment. Um, and it is actually very negative. So let's see what email four looks like. This is probably gonna be an angry customer. Okay, so hello, the wrong items were delivered to my house again, etc. Oh, he is asking for a, for 25% off his next order. Yeah, so this was an angry customer and um, let's see, is there a difference to the negative sentiment here with only 90% for email one? So if we look at email one, uh, this person is saying, I received my invoice for the order number something yesterday and there seems to be a mistake. Okay, so it's not really positive there was a mistake, but also this person is still polite and um, kind of patient with us. Okay, so um, this already gives us some good tips on how we can start to deal with those different emails. But now if I want to look into more details, I can <clears throat> look at the entities that were extracted from those emails. So if I look at my entities results table, and I will look at all of my results here. Um, then for example, for the email one, we have this uh, number we just saw that was our order number yesterday traditional cookbook volume 47 as the title of the specific cookbook two times one lucy connors as a person so we have already a lot of information that was extracted from this email um, and you can see here that we have these um, divided into certain categories as well now for my key phrases, let's again, uh, let's now look for those for my email for, for the new email, where file is email for. We can see we don't have these categories anymore, but we have um, a few more informative extractions from that text, like uh, the wrong items, three blue pots the second time, voucher program at least 25%. Um, so we already know quite a lot looking at this. Um, and um, yeah, perhaps I can send this to that, to our member of staff who knows the most about um, our pots or deliveries if we have this incapable delivery service here. Okay, so with that, thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for the SheBuilds team for having me. All right, so May, what did you think of our Flora session? Uh, I think it's, it's really exciting, it's really cool and um, I was just, 
chatting away in the chat. Um, sentiment analysis. I might probably try it in my mailbox. Somebody suggested an idea, try it on the, the spam mailbox and see what does it spit out as a result. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely some really great ideas from the audience, uh, from the viewers. Um, yeah. Were there any specific questions from, from the viewers or? Um, okay, so New Power, apologies again if I'm pronouncing the name wrong, the Twitch handles, it's asking if we have a workshop for this demo. So um, I will probably have to come back, unless my if you have any um, anything that you can share regarding the workshop for this demo? Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a document understanding solution that we talked about that has comprehended text track, uh, amongst others in there, uh, as mm -hmm. well as Kendra. So, so that's right. something to, uh, to check out as well, but, uh, we'll post that in the chat, um, in yep. terms of links and workshops and, uh, sample code as well. Um, it's, yeah. So this is a question from new power. <laughs> I thought I'll post it up there. Yeah. Is there any more questions before we move on to um, to the giveaways? Well, if there is any other questions, uh, should we do a giveaway? So the viewers, still stay tuned for that. We have got some free giveaway for the viewers. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, so we're giving away some lucky viewers AWS credits. Now, uh, what right. are AWS credits and what are they used for? Um, they're basically promotional credits that you can add to your AWS account. So you can start building on cloud. I know we have a free tier uh, that will help you with um, building stuff for free on AWS, but uh, mm -hmm. it's always good to know you have credits to fall back on in case you go over. That's so, right. um, May, do you want to drum roll, please? Um, yes. The, the question today. So, um, lucky viewers, uh, we're going to give away credits for this question. So, the question is, which two of the AI ML AWS services did Flora mention in her architecture? I'm going to post it in the chat as well. And uh, repeating it again, which two of the AI ML services, very specific, did Flora mention in her architecture? Whoever responded first and the correct is going to get um, AWS credit. Okay, keep the, keep the answer coming in. Oops, we've got um, a few answers. I'll wait a few more seconds to get um, the viewers putting it in their answer. Take a while, guess. If you, if you saw Flora's video, you probably guess what are those two AI ML services that she mentioned. All right. Should we wrap it up? Yep. Oh, there's two. Uh, okay, cool. So, okay. So the winners, we can say winners, uh, we'll give away two because we're two credits to two people uh, because we have um, some responses back. So let's do that. All right. The winners are ah, new power. So text, extract and comprehend is correct. And also, um, Gamer style, uh, gamer. Did I say it right? <laughs> gamer, gamer, <laughs> gamer <laughs> <Like>. styler. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, well done uh, to both New Power and Gamer Styler. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please do um, uh, reach out to us via the the Twitch DMs um, and let us know your email address and your real name so you can. Uh, so we can send uh, those credits out to you. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Cool. So we've got giveaway credits and I have got one more giveaway for the viewers again. <laughs> so um, my, my and um, my Flora and also myself prepare some homework um, that you can go and build yourself. So this is the tutorials or um, a workshop, a step-by-step, -step, a very simple guideline that you can go and build it in your AWS account. If you are the winner, you can use the credits, probably covered by the free tier, but you can still use the credits if you want to, um, to build out these solutions. So I'm gonna paste it in three links in the chat. And those are the workshop tutorials that you can get started. Fantastic, May. And, and Mai, do you wanna just, you know, 
five seconds walkthrough on those tutorials since you've you have look around these uh, and um, find those resources for the viewers? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I mentioned before, the document understanding solution, um, that is just a one-click deploy uh, via CloudFormation. Um, so, so have a look at that. Um, it's got all the documentation that you need to get started. Um, so that covers Comprehend, Textract, uh, Kendra as well, uh, as well as uh, there's, there's Lambdas in there that does uh, does uh, integrates all the solutions together, uh, as well as S3. So basically you can just upload um, a bunch of files onto S3. It'll automatically um, gather uh, either PDFs or uh, JPEG or other image files. And then um, you can, it does all the indexing behind the scenes. You can search uh, for a particular uh, phrase or a, you can ask a question even if, you're, if you've got a Kendra running in the background. Um, about, okay, so what does my profit look like for the quarter or something like that? And it will come up with the documents or the results of the documents um, that has all of that info, um, as well as being able to redact info like I, I mentioned before. Um, so it's very, very useful to, to have a play around with. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I hope to see you at the next episode in about a month's time and we'd love to hear your feedback and uh, comments around some topics that you'd like to learn a little bit more about. And if you identify as a woman or non-binary and uh, you've built something really cool on AWS, whether it be for personal or work purposes, we'd love to have you here as a guest on our show. So please reach out via uh, our LinkedIn profile or you can join the AWS SheBuilds LinkedIn uh, group or well, you can also reach us at the AWS SheBuilds uh, community email address as well, and May will be posting that in the chat. Uh, and with that, this is Mai. And this is May. Let's net out together on SheBuilds Tech Skills. Happy holidays, everyone, and uh, hope to catch you next time on our sessions. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Bye, Mai. Bye.